Hello, chic lovers. In chic, rule IDs play a pivotal role. This video will explore how they are structured. As we discussed previously, both ends of a chic communication share a common set of rules, and these rules are identified by rule IDs. A rule ID is an arbitrary binary sequence. The chic standard does not specify a fixed length for rule IDs as chic can be used across various technologies. When dealing with highly constrained frames, it may be advantageous to have very short rule ID. Conversely, if chic is used to compress large data flows, longer rule IDs may be more suitable. Certain technologies propose a fixed length for rule IDs. One such example is the LoRaWAN technology specified in RFC 9011 where the rule ID is stored in the 8-bit F port field. However, even within a single set of rules, the rule ID length is not fixed. This is because rule IDs are represented as binary prefixes, where the rules themselves are located at the leaves of the binary tree. To fully define a rule ID, two pieces of information are necessary, the value itself and the number of bits required to represent that value. The notation used is similar to the prefix notation in IP addresses, where the length is provided after a slash character. For instance, let's consider the rule ID 3 slash 3. This indicates that the value is 3, and we need 3 bits to represent it. Therefore, we can write it as 0, 1, 1 in binary. Here, we have the rule ID 3 slash 4, which in binary is represented as 0, 0, 1, 1 you can see that the value 3 is the same as the previous example. But since the length is different, 4 instead of 3, they do not correspond to the same rule. This distinction becomes more evident when visualized as the binary tree. When selecting the length for a rule ID, several criteria should be taken into consideration. The length must be sufficient to allow the identification of all the rules needed for a specific traffic flow. Rules that are more frequently used should be assigned shorter lengths. The length should be chosen in a way that avoids unnecessary padding at the end of the shock packet. In chic, compression and fragmentation, rules may share the same identification space. There is also a special rule called no compression that can be used when no other compression rule is applicable for compressing a packet. One more thing you may recall from our previous video, that the chic architecture relies on point-to-point -point communication. The rule, its are simply common identifiers within that instance. A rule could have a different ID in another instance, or its ID could reference a different rule. It is straightforward to identify the direction of traffic flow. By convention, the device or constrained object is placed on the left side. We have uplink traffic originating from the device and downlink traffic toward the device. The rules take these traffic directions into account. Compression rules are designed to work bidirectionally, operating in both uplink and downlink directions. However, for fragmentation rules, a specific direction must be assigned. Therefore, to fragment traffic in both directions, at least two fragmentation rules must be defined, one for uplink and one for downlink. This concept may become clearer when visualized on a time diagram. Let's consider an example to illustrate the process. We have an incoming packet that is compressed using rule ID 9-6. The compressed packet is then fragmented using rule ID 3 slash 4 for the uplink direction. The receiver obtains all the fragments, checks the integrity of the message, and sends an acknowledgement back to the sender using the same rule ID 3 slash 4. When the destination responds, the same compression rule 9 slash 6 is used, but the fragmentation is done using rule ID 15 slash 4 for the downlink direction. However, some fragments are lost during transmission, so the receiver requests a retransmission. 
Once all the fragments are successfully received and their integrity is verified, the reassembled fragments are decompressed. Finally, an acknowledgement is sent to the fragmenter, indicating the successful reception and decompression of the message. In conclusion, rural IDs play a crucial role in Sheik's compression and fragmentation processes, facilitating efficient communication between the constrained device and its counterpart. Thank you.